Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan East. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video is the title says above is a reading blog. Yes. P pumpkin spice tea. I'm not even gonna talk about it. Y'all got y'all know. But it's December 3rd, 419. And about 20, not even about 30, 45 minutes ago, I had just finished reading Zora of Rome by Tessa Afshar. I read that book in like one and a half days. My feelings. Um, I have my review already written up. You can check down below. But there will be a reading vlog that I'm going to be posting up in February. Um, so be on the lookout for that for February. But I did read it. My feelings. But I figured I could just start a new book today anyways, and I've been telling you guys that I wanted to read and review this book. I did get contacted from the publicist, I believe, from this author to read and review. And I'm actually interested because you guys know I'm trying to expand into thrillers and mysteries and things like that. But I'm starting off with a Christian genre just because I feel like that would be best for me to start off with and then dive into other ones. Lately, the few thrillers, mystery books I've been reading have actually been catching my attention, so... I think what it is, is I can probably read two or three thrillers a month, mystery books a month, but not back to back, because I'm still a fantasy lover to the core. But we're diving into The Shaft by Scott B. Delaney, and this is supernatural thriller, and it's Christian fiction, so Christian thriller, and I'm super, super excited. I did, like I said, receive this from the publicist. She contacted me via email, and um, told her I would definitely love to read, review, and even do a reading blog, because you guys, like I said, understand I'm trying to expand. So... This book did come with a business card from the author. Um, so it says The Shaft. On the back it just has the book and information. I also have a note from the woman that contacted me. So we have that. Just thank you again for agreeing to review The Shaft for me. Scott and I really appreciate your help. We look forward to watching your review and vlog videos on your channel. Warm regards. And I must say I love her handwriting. I don't, I'm a sucker for nice handwriting. I don't know why. Um, my book is signed from the author, which is so dope, right there. Love, I, I just, I love signed books, but I'm going to try to give you what my thoughts are on the synopsis and then read the actual synopsis, because I kid you not, I always get tongue-tied reading the synopsis. So what I remember from reading the synopsis like four times is that it follows, um, it takes place in December 2017 when the word of god is basically being spread out widely and you have a faction of pharmaceutical people and scientists that make this kind of secret society that want to stop the spread of the word of god so after that there is um some murders that happen to christian folk and they start dying and there is an assassin that needs to be caught because he's a serial killer or something like that. Yeah, um, I know that the FBI gets involved and it sounds epic. So if that confused you, I'm going to read the actual back of the book. Um, yeah. So it says, it is December 2017 and a sweeping religious movement is gaining traction in the United States. As spiritual leaders diligently work to spread the word of God to the people, liberal factions in the world of pharmaceutical and scientific development create a society with a dark mission to thwart the group's conservative impact on what society considers to be morally acceptable. As a string of church-related murders plague the nation, the FBI and local authorities race to locate the assassin responsible. When the members of the secret society realize that the murders are not stopping or slowing the threat, they resort to kidnapping. One of their abductees is Andrew Morrison, a key leader of the Call Ministry. After he manages to escape from his captors in Texas, he must identify and locate his family as well as the killer of many of his friends that were fellow leaders in this ministry. But as angelic hosts enter the scene to protect and intervene, now only time will tell who will win this compelling battle of good versus evil. In this riveting supernatural thriller, a chilling murder spree places a church leader in the crosshairs of a killer determined to stop a religious movement. So, we're excited. I'm expecting some grit. I'm expecting some scripture and some faith thrown in there. And, um, yeah, there are a total of like 50-something, se 70-something. Jesus, there's... There's a total of 79 chapters. Um, I have split this up already into four days. It's really three days, but um, it looks like four days here. So right now my goal is to read to page... Yes, I split it into three days, if I'm not mistaken. 
yeah it's split into three days but the first day i have split up so that i could try to read it but um my first day will be reading 108 pages um hopefully it's fast paced and i could just literally just fly through the book but um 108 pages so i'm gonna come back to you guys once i get to page 54 so once i get through chapter 12 um, I'll come back with my thoughts and then today I'm going to end at chapter 24 which will then have me start at chapter 25 tomorrow um, so yeah we'll see I'll keep you guys posted and let you guys know my thoughts so let's begin reading okay guys so I made it to chapter 6 and so far it's interesting I will say um, the prologue was uh, not the prologue, I think it was chapter one. Yeah, chapter one, there's this character named Nikolai, or Nikki, who is basically mentioned um, in the first chapter, and he is basically the assassin. <laughs> um, so that's not a mystery who the assassin is, apparently. Nikki is the assassin, and he is very... He worked um, in the army, so he's one of those guys that worked in the army, and now he's just doing paid work from... <sighs> Not, well, I'm trying to find a word. From He's taking jobs that are not good, basically. So he's killing off a lot of these leaders in the ministry, which is kind of sucky. Um, and then chapters 2 through 5 so far have been about Andrew, who is the main character from the synopsis. And I'm enjoying it, but the thing that I'm finding that I see so far is that this has a lot of description and internal dialogue or internal thought processing. And for me... I mentioned this on my book channel is that I don't like books that are heavy on internal thinking, internal dialogue, or description. I'm more of a character driven person, so I love character interactions. I love seeing the characters um, verbally speak with one another. This has verbal interaction, but not as heavy so far, and it's kind of pulling me out. That happens a lot. Like, there's a series that I love. It's a fantasy series right on my bookshelf that I really love. But I, like, it's literally a four-star series. But because it's so internal driven with the thought thinking, thought thinking, with the internal thinking and internal dialogue, I could only give the series, like, a three and a half star rating because of that. It pulls me out. I love character interaction. That's my thing. I love it. Um, I love plot driven stories, but I'm more of, I'm very heavy on characters. You know, I love characters. This, for me, is so far, it's just really just much plot, plot, plot. I will say I'm enjoying Andrew. Um, when he first popped up in chapter two, was it chapter two? Yeah. I was confused on who the main character, uh, like who was speaking because it didn't even mention his name until someone called out his name, which was like two pages later. So yeah, but so far I'm enjoying it. I'm on chapter six right now. Um, I'm cooking me a little bit of pasta right now because I'm hungry. So I'm making some Alfredo pasta. Alfredo pasta is literally like my go-to, my favorite thing with some shrimp. If I don't know what else to cook, some Alfredo pasta and shrimp, I'm good to go. So that's what I'm cooking right now for myself. My son is eating, my sister's eating on some stuff. My mom just took my brother to rehearsal. So I'm making a small pot of that for me to eat real quick. Um, and then I'm going to snack on some Funyuns. But um, the pacing is okay so far. But, yeah, I'm finding that that's my thing, is that this is very much um, internal dialogue, internal thinking, and I can't stand that type of writing. Um, the writing is good, but it's just that style of writing, when it's a lot of internal dialogue and internal thinking, it bores me. It makes me just skip over those pages. Um, I mentioned this in another video, which I don't think I posted that video on my channel yet. So by, by the time you see this video, that video should be up on my book channel. So I'm actually going to leave, um, you can just click the card above, I think that video should be up on my book channel. Um, if not, I'll leave it in the cards when I have that video up. But I talked about it, and you know what, let me just grab the series, hold on. Because I don't want it to seem like I'm being harsh, because I'm, I'm not being like harsh. So, this series here, it's, a, it's an adult fantasy series about dragons. It's called Dragon Slayer. The first one is Dragon Slayer, and then the sequel is Knight of the Silver Circle by Duncan um, M. Hamilton. And as much as I love this series, I can't stand the fact that it's internal dialogue. And what I mean by that is literally... There could be a whole, like, a whole five, six paragraphs with just straight internal dialogue and um that's what happened in this book the same thing like this i think i gave three stars and then this one i gave three and a half i don't i don't like internal dialogue that's just me um i like watching my character like the characters interact with one each other one another 
Um, and I think what it is is because I do a lot of internal dialogue and internal thinking myself. I don't like doing that, so I try to escape by reading other books where the characters are actually interacting. Um, I don't mind it, but I don't like when there's pages on top of pages on top of pages of straight internal dialogue, and then you get only two pages of interaction. So that's my biggest thing right now. I am enjoying it, though. Um, it is quite interesting seeing how The Call is working. The Call is basically a ministry that reaches out to... It reaches out to um, young Americans, the youth, trying to pull them in and get the word to them. Because, of course, when if you can get the word to the youth, then the word can be spread out massively, helping make them sense. But I'm enjoying it so far. We've met Andrew, we've met Stan, um, Beth, and everything, but we'll see. I'm going to keep reading until page 108. I'm on page 31 right now. So I'll come back once I get a little further and let you guys know what I'm thinking so far. So I don't have a rating as of right now, but um, hopefully by the time I get to page 108, I'll have a gist of what I think I'm going to rate this. So I'll come back. Okay, guys, so I'm at page 54, so I'm going to be reading chapter 13 shortly. And same feelings with the inner dialogue, but I will say things are quite interesting um so i talked about the guy nikolai from chapter one who's basically the killer the murderer the assassin um and then we're introduced to the person who hired him in chapter six who is gino who they call prometheus and then Ma mattery I'm, I'm gonna just say everhart um so there's gino and everhart and they are basically the leaders of the secret society of pharmaceutical people and scientists and things like that um so that's quite interesting so their neck they already said that their next target is going to be andrew which is insane um and then we get a quick quick page of the introduction of thailand 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 i think this is it thailand um who is apparently i'm gonna assume an angel i'm assuming um and then in chapter 12 that's when um, Andrew finally met Tylon. They shook hands and he felt this sort of peace and it was something about the voice of Tylon. So, things are picking up quickly, very quickly. Um, but again, that inner dialogue kills me all. Oh, that inner thinking and inner dialogue. I just, there's something about that type of writing that just nags me. And like I said, I think it's because I personally do a lot of internal thinking and dialogue that I don't like reading about it. But um, outside of that, I'm really enjoying it. So... I'm going to keep going to page 108. I have half left, 50% way. So, 54 pages left, basically, is what I'm saying. So, I'm going to read those 54 pages while I am watching some booktube videos. Um, the chapters are not long at all. They're about 34 pages long, which is why there are 79 chapters. Um, and they go back and forth between the different characters. So, I think it's interesting. I'm interested to see what happens because Nikolai is definitely on a track to um, kidnap. Andrew. They don't want to, the society doesn't want to kill Andrew. They want to kidnap him and have a conversation with him to try to sway him. So we're going to see. But Andrew keeps having these dreams and visions and You're supposed to, you're supposed to go off here because I got to pee. Okay. Close the door real quick, please. Okay. My father got it. Yes. But, um, they are trying to sway him and... I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting nonetheless. Right now, I'm thinking 3.75. Um, just right at the beginning. This would be a four star. Definitely a four star if we're not counting the inner dialogue. But because of that inner dialogue, 3.75. Um, yeah, I just I don't like inner dialogue. So I'm gonna keep reading and come back with my thoughts once I am at the 108th page. Okay, I got through one third of this, and um, I might bump myself four stars. Um, I still don't like the inner dialogue, but things are picking up. Like it's really fast paced, which I'm loving that it's fast paced. I think if it was slow paced, on top of that inner dialogue, definitely would have been a three star. But the fact that it's fast paced, despite the inner dialogue, I'm enjoying. There are definitely angels. So Tylon is definitely an angel. Um, we're introduced to Orion, and oh my god. Um, Meredith, Meritius, I don't know, another, I'm gonna just call him Marty. So we're introduced to Orion and Marty. I'm switching his name because I can't pronounce it. The, his real name would be on the screen. They're angels and they are 
protecting Beth and her children. Andrew has been captured um, by Nikki, and Nikki has hired, in a sense, Marco, who is another friend that worked in the army with him, to go after Beth and the kids. But Orion and Marty stopped him, and it was amazing. So, basically, um, this is on page 108. It's literally, like, the end of chapter 24. They're talking to um, Marco. They're telling him to chill out and stop, and they're basically saying the power of darkness has no do dominion over that which is our father's. I marked it in green, of course. Um, and, yeah. So, um, so far, it's good. I'm definitely gonna say... I'm gonna say four stars. But, as I continue reading, we'll see. So, tomorrow, I'm gonna pick up, uh the next third of the book i may read some more tonight and then come back to you guys tomorrow morning and tell you guys my thoughts but 108 pages in i'm loving the fast pace i'm loving the characters lots of characters too many to keep track of honestly i feel like when i read this i would have to do how i do my fantasies and get like a note card and like write down characters name and things because it's too long but i'm loving it i'm loving andrew um i'm loving the angels and everything and i'm loving the entire plot so far so definitely enjoying this and i'll come back to you guys tomorrow with my thoughts on the next Third. Hey guys, so I'm back. Um, it's December 5th. Let me try to show you guys. So December 4th, excuse me. Wednesday, December 4th, 255. So I just picked up my son from school. Um, all this makeup is on my face because I did the first book look makeup tutorial. That one was inspired by Daughter of Rome. So this is like the final product, but you're not gonna see that video, like I said previously in another video. You're not gonna see that video until um what day is that? <laughs> until the last saturday in january so you're not gonna see this look tutorial for like a month but i just decided to wear the makeup because i love the way it came out it's really really pretty i got compliments on it as i went outside just now um i don't normally do my makeup a lot like i used to but i do like it but we're gonna dive back into the shaft the goal today is to get to page 210 so 109 to 210 so about 100 pages of reading and i'll come back to you guys Okay, guys, so I read half of the pages that I needed to read today. Um, I'm on chapter 41. I need to make it to 51. So I have 10 more chapters to go. Um, I'm really thinking 3.75 star. In a dialogue, in a thought process, it kills me. Um, the bit of dialogue you do get is really short. And again, like I mentioned previously, that's just not my style of writing. Or that's not the style of writing that I prefer to read. Um, I don't know. It's just like I'm inside of his head. And I don't know. I don't know how to explain how I feel. I'm enjoying it. But that inner dialogue is killing me. Like, I feel like, first of all, it switches between characters a lot. Um, you know, you're going back and forth between Andrew, Nikki, um, the Angels some other guys that work for Prometheus and then you're in Prometheus. It, it, it's a lot of switching back and forth. It's done well, don't get me wrong, definitely done well. It's not hard. Um, each chapter is giving you exactly like where you are, the time, and the date. So you're pretty much able to follow along. But I do find that when it comes to Andrew, however, um, I've noticed that I don't really understand that it's his chapter until we're about two pages into the chapter, which kind of confuses me because I'm just like, who is this I person? I who? I who? Because all of the characters have their perspective in the story. Even Beth had her perspective. So Andrew's chapters confuses me a bit, but I've, I've come to realize that anytime it says I without explaining who it is, it's automatically Andrew. So we have that. Um, Andrew has escaped. He's on going back to Atlanta. He's in Texas right now, if I'm not mistaken. He's in Texas, so he's on his way back to Atlanta. The angels have all gathered together. They've gotten more angels to help out in order to protect him and his family, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, 3.75 stars is what I'm sitting at. Only because that inner dialogue. If it wasn't for the inner dialogue, it definitely would have got a 4 star. But that... That inner dialogue, I don't... It, it's killing me. Because it's just like... Lots of inner dialogue. So I'm going to finish reading the last 10 chapters. And come back with my thoughts. Um, I feel like I want to take all this makeup off my face. I haven't worn makeup in so long. So it's kind of weird for me to have makeup on my face. Right now. And I can't like... You know, I'm loving this glow right here on my cheek, y'all. She did that. She glowed out all the way. Yes, honey. That glow is 
that that glow is serious. Like y'all can Yes, I love it. I use my um the blush that I use is actually a shimmer blush, so it, it's a coral kind of orangey blush, but it has pink flecks inside of it. So the blush itself is really shimmery, as you can see why my cheeks are shimmery. And then on top of that, I put on my big bronzer from Milani and Glow, which is like a neutral, not a neutral, but it's like a really soft highlight. And then I went on top of that with the Becca highlighter. Yes, she is glowing. But I'm ready to take off this makeup. Um, as much as I love wearing makeup, and doing makeup, I'm ready to take it off, like, ASAP. Um, these eyelashes, I normally don't do eyelashes on my eyes, like, at all. I've gotten compliments on this look, like I said. It's really pretty, and I definitely will redo this look again. But, um, I can't get over this. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm looking at, the ca like, the actual camera, because that highlight is just everything right now to me. She is oof, and my cheeks are dope. You can definitely see that coral blush on my cheeks. I love my lipstick is clearly on because I've been sipping on um orange soda. It's all on my cup, so and I had a little bit of pasta. I'm still snacking on my Cheetos, um, and I'm watching anime as I read, but. So far, 4.75 star rating. Four, did I say 4? 3.75 star, excuse me. I'm enjoying it. I really want to see how this ends. Honestly, like, I'm ready to just, like, flip to the end of the book and find out what happens at the end. Because I'm, I'm like, we need to know. Because you have all these angels. Like, they're coming hard. Like, there's a lot of angels on deck ready to save him. And I'm loving it. But I don't like inner dialogue, inner thought process. I just, I don't like it. That's like the one I think if I had to pick like my pet peeves in like writing styles as far as like reading books, I don't care for inner dialogue. I don't like inner thoughts. Um I don't like books where there are multiple characters but you don't know which characters are like in and this I'm not okay, let me just say this. I'm not coming for this author in this book. This book is great. Okay? I love the way this is written. The switch up, the POVs, is easy to understand except for Andrew for some reason. Andrew just wants to be special. But um, what I mean is I've read other books where they have like five different POVs, but you never really know who the POV is because they either don't write the title, the character's name at the top of the chapter, or you just don't know who POV it is until you get further into the book and start to distinguish like... If you have multiple POVs, I prefer you to distinguish it. I love that his characters are distinguished. You do have Prometheus, um, who his name is, oh god, Gino, excuse me. Gino is his name, but they call him Prometheus. You have Nikki, which is the assassin. We know who he is. Um, you have Beth, who is obviously Andrew's wife. You have Andrew. Then you have Orion Teleon, Te 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 the Andrews, okay? Orion and the Andrews is what I'm going to say. Um, there's a guy named Ed. Ed does confuse me a bit. I'm still trying to figure out who exactly Ed is because I'm I'm just confused. There's a lot of people dying, you know, so trying to keep up with the characters is a lot. But I love that, you know, this book really is doing good on distinguishing each character. Like I said, if, except for Andrew. Andrew's the only character who when he pops up in the chapter, he's just like, I, 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 I. And then when he finally does interact with somebody, they say Drew or, An or Andrew, and I'm just like, oh, that's who it is, you know? Andrew, I'm gonna need you to get it together. But Andrew is doing a really good job trying to get back to his family and find out who the killer is. I'm enjoying him right now. I'm enjoying the suspense portion of this. The crime portion of this is really good. Um, the FBI really ain't doing much. They're not doing enough for me, at least. <laughs> so, we'll see. But, um, so far, I'm definitely enjoying this, um... But as much as I want to give it a four star, is that I have to take away point twenty five just because of that inner thought process, that inner dialogue. It guts me. It just, ugh, it kills me. But I'm going to continue reading and come back with my final thoughts, and then that'll be it for today. All right, so I'm done reading. I read all the way to page 210, um, 210, chapter 52, and then I split up tomorrow's reading into two sections by the, um... So I'm going to read this in the morning, that at night. But um, I may just finish this tonight. Um, 
My bad, my son is watching Disney Plus. He just finished watching Garfield, so I'll just put on the Lego movie for him. One of the Lego ones. But um yeah, I read it. Um I really want to give it a four. Like I really do. But I'm gonna say a three point seven five star rating right now. Unless the last third gives me something crazy because things are picking up. So Andrew escaped and he's working with the agents or whatever. And now all of a sudden his family is kidnapped, which I don't get because the Andrews were supposed to be protecting his family. Like, come on, Orion, what are you doing? You and the Andrews were supposed to be protecting his wife and his kids, and now they're all of a sudden they're kidnapped. Unless I'm reading it wrong or whatever, but <laughs> I don't know. It's a wild, interesting read. Um, the supernatural aspects are definitely coming from the Andrews being a part. Now, they do reference the darkness. I'm not sure if, like, the darkness is, like, an actual being on the earth in this book i don't know i hope it is because you know you have angels that are like on earth in human form so i would hope that it is but i'm excited to continue and see what happens towards the end like i said i may just finish this tonight and come back later on or i may read some tonight and then finish it in the morning but i don't want to keep reading the back i was about to read the back but yeah um so far it's so good is it's a four, but I'm really gonna give it a three point seven five star rating because of that inner thought process and dialogue. It kills me, but I am enjoying it. Definitely would re recommend this so far. Um, it's definitely fast paced. Um, it really picks up quickly. Like the chapters are really short, so things are happening like this. Literally, chapters are no more than four pages long, and back to back. So I'm enjoying it. I think one chapter was like half a page long, so it's just like what? That's it. Um, so you definitely do have to have the mindset to keep up with a, pa a fast paced read because it is quick. There is a lot of action and a lot of characters, which I personally love. I just wish there was more dialogue and less inner thinking. That's just me personally with the way I like to read, but I am enjoying this nonetheless. So I'm going to stop it from for here for now. Um, I'm going to go clean my face off. Look at this glow one more time. Yeah. I don't understand this glow though and i really love this foundation because it's really skin like um the foundation i'm wearing is the revlon nearly naked i do not buy high-end makeup or let me rephrase that i don't buy high-end foundation for myself um my personal makeup collection is really like drugstore brand honestly that's just what i personally use i, I could definitely beat my face with some drugstore makeup that's just me but um I have so many eyeshadow palettes and I will never hit pan in a palette that I, I can use my high-end and mid-range makeup for myself and my kid at the same time. Now, as far as foundations, I just buy drugstore. I love me some Maybelline and the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation is great. I also love the Revlon Nearly Naked, the Revlon Superstay, and there's another Revlon foundation that I really like. Um, I also love the Mary Kay Time Wise foundations. Those are good as well. But I don't see... I don't think I need to spend $80, $90 on a foundation. I just, I won't. If I were to ever buy a high-end foundation, it would be Makeup Forever. Um, only because I actually had a sample of their foundation and I liked it. I would also get the Lancome um, Tint. The Lancome Foundation, I can't remember the name of it. Um, when I worked for Lancome, I used to wear it. I wore their makeup when I worked for them. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even buy that. I would stick to drugstore makeup that I can easily go buy quickly um, instead of having to travel to Sephora or an Ulta or something to buy it. So I, I stick to drugstore and that's the foundation I have on right now, which is great for me. But I'm just, I'm loving this highlight here. But yeah, I'm going to go wash my face, get back to my anime. I'm done with my reading for today. I may pop back on and read tonight. I am reading another book um, for my regular channel. It's called A Lady's Past, so that's what I'm reading. But I'm going to go. Someone just run the doorbell and I think it's a package. Hold on. Okay, so that was just my landlord asking if there was a package that got delivered, but no. But, yeah, um, I'm reading this historical romance. It's called A Lady's Past by A.S. Finichel. Um, It's good so far. I'm enjoying it. Um, The couple is really comical, but it's not really grasping my attention. So, there's that. Um, I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to give this, but I'm reading that as well. Um, tomorrow is, what's tomorrow? 
tomorrow is thursday and i get to start a new book with my sis i'm probably not going to do a reading vlog on this just because i have so many reading vlogs to edit and i don't have enough space on my computer so i'm going to tell you guys now the next book i'm going to be reading is the spice king by elizabeth camden and i'm going to be buddy reading this with my sis stephanie of course we have books set up until february i think to buddy read <laughs> so i'm excited for this this one is historical romance um historical fiction with some romance and i'm excited what attracted me to this book is the cover i, I love the font the cover and i just I, I love the way he looks so like studious and his name is gray delacroix so um it has to do with the smithsonian and um yeah it takes place in kansas though so that's gonna be an interesting read interesting read i already have my my days already like set to go but um yeah that's it for oh, today so i'll holla at y'all tomorrow okay guys so it's 7 36 i just had an hour-long meeting with the church administrative team so we had a meeting but i finished both the books that i said i was reading so i finished this historical fiction fantasy fantasy historical fiction romance I'm giving it a three stars um as much as i enjoyed the romance between diana and jacques um it bored me tremendously bored me um i found that i was skipping over paragraphs so three stars for this um and i did finish the shaft by scott delaney and i decided to settle with a four star rating i enjoyed the ending enough but I also felt incomplete with that ending. I don't know. There was just something with the way things were settled with um, Nikki and Gino that I just didn't like. Um, but I'm glad things worked out for Andrew in the end. Um, I enjoyed Orion and the other angels. I just wish they would have acted quicker than they did. <laughs> um, you know, I loved all the characters and things like that. But um, yeah, I really did enjoy this book, I do see me rereading this maybe in October next year. Um, but it was really good. Sorry. My throat is dry. I had to take minute notes for the meeting. I, I got a headache. Um, I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. But um, it was really good. I did enjoy the characters, like I said. The writing... Okay, so the writing was good. But I didn't care for the internal dialogue. Just... But again, that's personal preference. I don't like books that are all about internal dialogue. Like, I don't. Like, you can have internal dialogue, but if that's literally all you have throughout the chapters, it it starts to pull me out. Like, I get pulled out. So, I did enjoy it. I definitely enjoyed the supernatural aspects. I liked the action. Um, I thought each of the characters were well written. Excuse me. And um, it's definitely fast-paced and quick read, so I definitely do recommend if you're looking for, like, a thriller with more um of a fantasy-esque supernatural kind of feel because the angels are present in this they are like actual beings and there's like real people that came out the sky and could fly in the sky and type stuff like that. <laughs> stuff like that excuse me but um great read definitely recommend it but i think that is it my written review you can definitely check it down below in the description bar but um yeah that's it for this video you guys thank you guys for oh, watching yeah watching this video with me i'm tired i'm hungry and all that but um yeah i'm definitely interested in reading more from scott b delaney if he has other books out i'm definitely gonna look into it because i enjoyed this enough to want to check out others and um yeah i think that's it for this video so i will see you guys in the next video bye